take a look at this little spinning top I've just made. I made this using a material I think I might have just invented. It's a bit like plywood, but it's got rainbow colours all the way through it. Let's just have a look. It's not brilliant as a spinning top, I don't think. That's oh, okay. A little bit of fun. Have a look at the way the colours are exposed in different areas there. So if you'd like to see how I made this, keep watching. Okay, now I've got these wooden lollipop sticks. These are intended for crafting. So about half of them were dyed, all different colours. And earlier on, I snapped one of these in half just to see, and the colour does actually permeate at least halfway through the wood. There is a little bit of undyed wood in the middle, but the, the dye does penetrate. And so I was thinking, maybe we could do something with these where we stick them together in alternating layers like this and carry on building alternate layers up and up and up. I mean we're essentially reinventing plywood but I think if we stick them together nice and tight like that alternating layers, mixed colours, I think then we'll have a blank that we can turn on the lathe or we can cut and use to make things like doorknobs and so on. So I'm going to have a go with that. Uh, so I did buy myself just a few more packs. It's about half of what I bought actually. So I bought a whole load more of these lolly sticks and we'll glue them up. I've just got some five minute epoxy and we'll glue them up into layers see what we end up with. But I think probably some sort of scheme is necessary here. So I think I'm going to, I want the colours to be regular inside the kind of random-ish. I'm going to make it as many across this way as it is long. So let's have a look and see. Talking about another one on there? I think so. Okay. Let's so go back to green. Yeah, and then we start the other direction. So we go there. Blue. Yeah, that's good actually. The, they naturally have fallen in such a way that the number of colours and the distribution means that the colours will actually wander through the material. They don't repeat straight off, straight away. Yeah, that's going to work. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven by eleven. Eleven's good because it's an odd number, which means that the colours will drift through the material. So, let's get ourselves set up. I'm going to sort out these sticks into piles so that I don't have to scrabble around because this glue has got quite a short setting time so I need to make sure everything here is prepared and ready to go. Okay so I've just got a couple of pieces of scrap ply which are nice and flat. I've got some polythene here so I'm going to wrap that around the base of this to start with because epoxy will not stick to polythene plastic so that means we'll be able to free that up easily at the end. So I think the first thing to do will be to lay out the first layer, spread some glue on top of it, stick the second layer on, spread some glue on, and every now and again I'll press it down by putting polythene across the top, putting the top board on and weighing it down with some heavy weight. So we're all but ready I think, so I've got <coughs> disposable gloves, I've got my epoxy resin, I've got some little disposable pots to use. I've got some stirring sticks. These are coffee stirrers that I liberated from a fast food restaurant. You didn't really think I put these back in the restaurant, did you? Right, so let's get started. Uh, 
that's obviously not going to work because this thing's drifting around too much. I could tape that down, but I think we're going to get a bit of paper. Okay, so let's see if we've got any kind of result here. Okay, well, I think that might be easier to, to build on top of now. Against my better judgment, I'm going to dispense with the gloves now because um, I'm just finding that the gloves are actually hindering my ability to work fast enough. So let's have a another little mix of glue. I don't think this is the right glue for the job because I'm going to go through several packets of this before I'm done, which is uh, going to get expensive rather fast. <music> the glue that's what I should be doing idiot mix the glue on top of the wood then spread it around to all the corners that's the way to do it okay so this time we start with blue on and then weigh it down. starting to build but it's pretty obvious that this is not an economic way to buy epoxy for a project like this. I'm going to need much more resin really than I can practically get from little tubes like this for, which are really just for DIY and repair work. <music> That's a full pack of lolly sticks I've got nearly through now and three and a bit tubes of glue. So I'm just going to finish off this glue. This is my last tube of glue and then we'll stop then. And then we can do some experiments with this. We'll cut it open and see what, what uh, the material properties are like. So at the end of all of that we've got a solid it's unfortunately stuck down to the baseboard, but we'll go to three in a minute. A solid block of what is essentially plywood. So let's just see if we can get that free from its... There we go. So that's fine. I don't mind, mind it being stuck on that paper like that. In fact, we'll just tear that off to the extent we can. So, that's a pretty solid and coherent block of rainbow plywood, I guess. So, right, well, we'll see what we can do with that. That's used nearly a whole pack of lolly sticks and four tubes of epoxy. Now, I haven't got the alignment of those sticks quite right on the end here, 
So that's going to be add a little bit of sort of natural randomness into the finished products that we make with this. And I'm not really sure what I'm going to make with this, but we'll see what we can do. But it's quite convenient that 11 sticks fit across the length of one stick because it means that the colours have staggered all the way through the piece. So I think we'll cut some blanks out of this and we'll try turning we'll try turning a little doorknob or something like that on my drill powered lathe. So I think we'll start off with a with a smallish square blank. <laughs> Okay, that was tough going, but I imagine a piece of plywood of the same thickness would probably be just as difficult to cut. And so you can see the colour of the edge is going to be visible in the product. It's quite subtle, but I think that's going to look quite nice. Right, we're going to do some real quick and dirty wood turning here, just to see what the effect is like. So. I've got my blank, I'm going to drill a hole through it, I'm going to put a bolt through it and I'm actually going to turn it on the bolt as a spindle rather than between centres. So first thing to do is drill a hole through the middle, the approximate middle, that looks about right to me. Okay, that looks good to me. Next we're just going to put a bolt through the middle of there and tighten the nut onto it. So this is my setup and if you're a wood turner or a member of the internet safety police you will already have spotted all of the shortcomings and flaws that I have noticed. We are just experimenting here to see what this material turns like so you don't need to tell me how unsafe and stupid this looks I do realize it. I think we're going to have to go for quite high speed because this material is going to catch a lot so very light cuts and high speed. Let's get started. Okay, well we are starting to get down into this solid material. There's still some voids I need to work past. I think I'm going to carry on with a scraper and see how we got on there. It's still very catchy. Okay, so that's my basic spinning top shape. I'm going to take the tool rest away now and we'll do some sanding. Okay, right, I'm going to go ahead and part that off now and then we'll mount it on a little spindle. Right, terrible bodge for here, but this will do. I've just got a piece of hardwood dowel chucked directly in the drill. Don't hate me. And I'm just going to use the sandpaper to put a point on there and just to take the surface roughness off of here. It's exactly the right diameter, so I don't want to take any thickness off of here. So here is my finished spinning top and the dowel is just to push fit directly through the hole in the middle. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.